is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. You know, one of the most dangerous things about some of these black preachers is that they don't want to stick to the Bible. They don't want to preach the Bible. They won't preach or teach the Old Testament. They claim they don't understand it. They won't teach the book of Revelations. They like to get into a few scriptures where it says, would a man rob God? And then they'll do a lot of preaching about that, trying to get you to give till it hurts, pounding the pastor. So, you know, they know how to preach to get money out of you, but they don't want to preach the whole scripture. And then they want to turn the pulpit into something like a throne where they become a dictator. Now, I want you to listen to this because this just absolutely, I won't say infuriated me, but it, it annoys me. This kind of thing just irritates me. The Bible says without faith or complete absolute confidence in the word of God and the God of the Bible, we cannot please him. Time we turn to something else, then we're showing our lack of faith in him. If I've got Jesus, that's enough. I don't need reparation. So I don't know who this pastor is, but it's a church of God in Christ. So it's a Colgate church. I don't know where it is and I don't know who he is, but that's what he's preaching. He doesn't need reparations because he's going to be paid every Sunday for getting up there and doing stuff like that. He's using Jesus to make a political point. Slavery in America was something that the United States government allowed to happen to a race of people. Jesus did not sanction slavery in the United States. Now that is a political statement. You don't need reparations. Reparations is something that the government owes black people. It's a debt. Now in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, in the Old Testament of the Holy Bible, the 25th chapter and verses 1 through 13, it speaks about the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee came every 50th year. It was a year where people were released from their debts. The captives, those people that were enslaved, were set free. And property was returned to the people who owned the property because the slavery was based on you owing somebody and not paying them back. And it was also a year when the land was at rest. It was two years of following of the soil where they didn't plant. They gave the land a rest. And it was also a time when they were supposed to spend more time with their families, bond with their families, and spend more time in worship, depending on God to provide their needs. It was a part of their worship and their covenant with God. They were to obey those rules. So you didn't go 50 more years holding somebody enslaved after the year of Jubilee. You had to let those people go. So that's not the slavery we had. The kind of slavery that we went through in America was inhumane. This chattel slavery was inhumane. So to me, this pastor is way out of his range. And I'm not saying all preachers do this but a lot of them do. If he wanted to talk about reparations, why couldn't he refer back to the Bible and speak on how the Bible says you're supposed to deal with enslaved people? Why couldn't he go back and talk about the year of Jubilee and how it should have been done? Because really, they shouldn't have even had us over here enslaved because we didn't owe these people anything and we weren't at war with them. They were at war with us. So this whole thing was just evil. And back to this preacher, I never forget what they used to say in the South. They used to say, you can buy a black preacher for $500. That meant that the politicians had those preachers in their hip pocket, and they would say whatever those white people wanted them to say. Now, I'm not saying that's what this man is doing, 
But what I'm saying is that what he was preaching, preaching that kind of message, is really not helpful to black people. When you think about the economy, when you think about they're trying to roll back every kind of opportunity that we have, and he's going to stand up and say, I don't need reparations. And I believe that this is one of the reasons that we're having such a falling away in these churches. Because this kind of message does not resonate with black people. There is nothing about getting up there and telling your congregation that people can take advantage of you, your family, your children, take away your wages, and you stand up and say that they don't owe me anything. I just need Jesus. Well, that's not good enough for a lot of people because that's really not what even Jesus was preaching. Jesus was preaching fairness. So this man is totally off his rocker and <laughs> it is just, I mean, it's just unbelievable what these preachers would get up in the pulpit and say. And the next thing is, if that's all you got to say to black people, you shouldn't, you shouldn't even bring reparations up because that is a political discussion. That's a discussion that should be had with the, with the leaders of this country, with these corporations, with the government, with these colleges and these churches that were involved in slavery. That's not something for you to take to the church to say you don't believe people should be compensated for it when everybody else has been compensated for anything that was done to them. But he's going to shake that congregation down for every cent he can get and leave that church with a pocket full of money where there are going to be people at that church who are struggling to pay their bills. But all they need is Jesus. I mean, I just think people like this do more damage than they do good. Now, maybe in his congregation, that's what they want to hear. All they want to hear is, I just need Jesus. That's all I need. And it's definitely about the money, but equally offensive to me is the devaluing of black life, the devaluing of the black experience, the devaluing of black labor, black bodies, black people's health, the mental health of black people, the psychological damage that's been done to black people. All of that is devalued. When you say, oh, I don't need reparations, because what he is saying by default is you don't need reparations either. There is a kind of humanity that is supposed to go with slavery. The kind that was practiced here was not even, it ought not even be called slavery. It really ought to be called something else. But in the interest of being fair, I will share this. Somebody named Byron wrote in the comment section, I don't want black folks to use this particular pastor as a reference of being the mindset of the black church or majority of Christians in general. The Bible has scripture about reparations for slave labor. And he said he could pull it up if requested. But the Bible is not going to speak about this kind of slavery that took place in America because it wasn't biblical. This was from the devil. Somebody that was in that church took it upon themselves to record what that preacher was saying and put it on social media. And I think it's a good thing he did that because this is a discussion that we need to have. You really shouldn't be speaking about reparations in the church without speaking about the slavery that goes with it. And you should tell the people what the Bible says about slavery and reparations. Not giving your personal opinion about it. Because again, when you just say, I don't need reparations, you throw reparations around. That is a political statement. And he may not need reparations. He really may not need reparations. But I guarantee you there are some people in that church that do. So that's all I got to say about it. But okay, y'all, let me know what you think about this. Let me know because some of y'all might agree with him. But I would like to know. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.